Hello, everybody, and thank you once again for joining me for another weekend edition of the show. This is the Cascade Constructed Weekend. I try and cover all of the events every week when they do the special events like this. Uh, it's a good way to build your collection, particularly from the free-to-play perspective, which I am. All free-to-play, so for more content like this, I do deck techs, I do drafts. Um, from the perspective of a free-to-play player without a wide collection of, of cards to pick from. Although it's growing. It is growing. Just be sure you subscribe to kind of watch the uh, the journey here. And this show, we will be doing the Cascade Constructed event, which is <clears throat> uh, each spell has Cascade. Now, you're only your first spell of the turn uh, gets to exile all the cards from the top of your library until you exile an on-land card with converted mana cost less than the spell that you cast, and then you get to play that card for free, basically. Uh, but it's only the first spell of your turn, so I've been sort of on the fence with what to play for this event. Um, we're going to go ahead and get into it. We'll pay the gold, we'll pick a deck, and we will we'll go from there. I kind of feel like playing Boros, even though it's Boros aggro, but we'll get things like, um, you know, heroic reinforcements and stuff in there. And I think that's going to be kind of fun to at least try out. So why don't we try Boros for this run? We'll just see what's going on with it. We will... Figure it out as we get through it. You know, this is one of those events where it's going to be tricky to get your five wins in. Uh, it's only 250 gold. It's not like it costs a lot. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't try and make a deck to go five wins in this event. Uh, you could. You might find something that works really well and then go to town. That might be kind of fun. See, I like this a lot, even though it's like four turns, five turns, four turns away. Um, it's kind of fun to get some of these, like, with cascade effects going on. There's a lot of one-drops in this deck, too, so that won't won't do me much good. But I'm going to hang on to this really slow hand and hope that it pays off. But we will see what ends up happening. I've seen some cool effects with um, spectacle cards where you'll play, like, so this... This guy's doing mono red, and he's going to have some spectacle triggers and spectacle and wizard's lightning and stuff. Wizard's lightning casts for one, right? But the mana cost on it is technically three. So you don't have to, like, you don't have to spend the three mana. It costs one, even if you do, so if he does a spectacle trigger right here, he'll get, and this is going to be a loss. Like, I can already tell. This is way too slow of a start for a deck like this. I should have figured we're playing mono red. Um, so here he goes, even if it's like a light up the stage. He'll, he'll prick me for one right here. That, mm, that may not have been the smartest move. So he should have done... He should have done the, the Wizard's Lightning pre-combat. And then been able to attack with the Firebrand that turn. But, you know, you live and learn through these fairly silly events. Okay, so check this out. We got Tajik coming down. Hopefully he doesn't have a... How funny. It's a goblin banneret that gets to be played for free. It doesn't have haste or anything, so I can't attack with both of them. But the banneret comes down. He could prick it with the firebrand, but in either case... Well, he can't. This is funny. We're going to shoot him, shoot over with Tajik here. That'll work. That's unfortunate. So he kills Tajik with Wizard's Lightning, and now he can use his Firebrand to shoot my, my Banneret. So this is, his deck is going to work flawlessly. Uh, doesn't always work this good. I've tried with Mono Red before a couple times. It's, it's hit or miss. Either it works perfectly, or it falls apart and crumbles, and you don't get the cards you need. So like I would do Vyashino Pyromancers into like Lava Runners, and I'd never get my Sorcery. Shock. It couldn't be more perfect for him right now. This is just silly. So he goes Shock to the face, he goes Pyromancer to the face, and he attacks all out, and... I feel like... I feel like taking it. I feel like taking some damage here. I'm on board with that idea. We'll drop a Johnny, and we will get to hopefully cast a creature. I think the only option is creatures, yep. Make them two twos. We'll save them as blockers. We'll, hey, we're dead. I'm pretty sure this is the game. Anyways, we're at eight. This is his deck worked too fast for us. I kept that slow hand, thinking I was uh, I was Billy Badass over there, and it did not work out well. <laughs> like, I'm gonna 
We're gonna drop Lyra. If Lyra resolves, maybe, probably not. Integrity doesn't give us much. Intervention gives us three life, so he's worried about blockers. Um, that's He's getting too many firebrands on the table. He may go after a Johnny in this case. Either way, he doesn't. The game is probably over. That's six damage, I'll be at two. Could go up to five with intervention and remove a two-two. Um, looks like I have to do that and go to four life and then and then make my banner at a three-three and then worry about blocking. I mean, I think that's the only way to pretend like we have a shot at winning this game. Oh boy, and we got ourselves a hunted witness. Woo hoo! -hoo. So we'll do a Johnny. Be strong. And perhaps we found a way to get some blockers. He's got five cards in hand. There's no way this works out for us. We're at five. He's playing red. Although he's getting to the point where he may not have too many more one casting cards left. So he needs land. He hasn't really hit land drops. That's kind of nice for us to, to be in this position. Lyra Dawnbringer's coming down next, and she's very strong on her own. I mean, she takes a lot of removal. He won't have the mana to, to resolve Lyra Dawnbringer. Okay, so I got a 3-3 three, three to block here. 2-2 two, two to block here. We're good with that. We'll take 3, go to 2, and that's pretty much death, right? I'm pretty sure. All of our mana for Lyra. That's just how we're doing it. But then we get another creature, though. Aurelia? No. So I am going to give my little goblins a counter, just so that they survive the errant goblin chain whirler. I'm not going to cast Conclave Tribunal yet, because that's too risky. Um, we just have to hope he doesn't draw anything to play. I mean, this is... We're at two. Like, he he draws a Pyromancer. We die. Uh, it's, we're just... Okay. Dead. <laughs> that was close. It wasn't very close. Alright, I'm getting ready to die. Yep. Cool. So, Mono Red is quick. Even quicker with Cascade. Sometimes. It doesn't always work. And I don't mind this event either, because if you lose twice even, like, we're probably going to lose twice with this Boros deck I have put together. Um, you lose twice, you still get you get your 50 gold back, so it only costs you 200 gold, and you get two uncommon, so it's it's a decent way to build that up a little bit. Baron Sanger, how funny. How come Baron Sanger isn't an avatar? That's an excellent point. So we've got something something to play early. Okay. This is definitely a keeper hand. So we've got a Hunted Witness that'll come down first. And that will cascade into absolutely nothing. And then hopefully on turn two we can get a Adanto Vanguard to play. Or a Boros Challenger even. Anything that costs two mana. And then get another like Healer's Hawk or Hunted Witness down. That would be nice. And that would give Tajik something to do when he comes down. Good old Lanoir Elves. This is Gruul. This might be kind of nice, too, playing Gruul with, like, uh, there we go, Boros Challenger. That's terrific. A Banneret. I can appreciate that. There's no way he blocks. He will take the one, for sure. Of course, I don't know why anybody would block a Hunted Witness with a Llanowar Elf. This Llanowar Elf is way too valuable as a as a mana source. Oh, now he's got two of them down. So now we could do... Steel Leaf Champion, maybe, which is only three. So I don't know if the if the Gruul Ramp cards are, are too powerful in this setting. This is gonna... This is gonna hurt. This is working really nicely right now. So we Tajik mentors Boros, Boros mentors Banneret, and then it just scales up. 
he must have something amazing in his hand to not concede. Yeah, uh, it's with Tajik down, we kind of saved ourselves from the Raging Sword, too. So I, th I think that's what he thought he was going to do, was do a board wipe, but I got Tajik down, which prevents all the damage. Uh, so, yeah. So, I mean, it's pretty much game over, right? Three, four, five, so six, eight, ten. I mean, yeah, okay, all right. So we'll drop some Aurelia into a... another Boros Challenger. I feel like I want to remove this Needletooth Raptor, because it does 5 damage to a creature, and Aurelia's got 5 toughness, so why don't we do these two guys and my two little tokens, and then get rid of... just scoot him out of the way here. This 5-5 five five is going to be tough, but we'll worry about that right now. <clears throat> so the dual mentor pays off there. See how that works? It just happens at the same time. Okay, so he takes 8. He's at 2. I don't know that he's got too many other options here. Five, well, okay, so there goes Aurelia, but I think it's too little too late. He's not going to have enough blockers. Yeah, I figured. So he gets to put a dinosaur card on top of his library, but that's not going to save him. I mean, he's already at two, and I've got two mentors here, so I'll, any one of my creatures sneaks through, it's the game is over. So it doesn't it doesn't matter. Regisaur Alpha is fine. He can he's not going to be able to cast it simply because the moment I attack. So check this out. Both of my mentors. Yep. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Even my little tokens, like they. At 2-2, two, two, there's still something that needs to be reckoned with. Oh, this is my daily reward, so I got the card. Flight of the Equinauts. Alright, and one win. So, I haven't... Now, it used to be the case where you would get the wins from these events, and there was a chance they could be rare or even mythic. I, I pulled a couple of mythics from those events. That was right around... It's like Christmas time. So it was a couple months ago. But I do remember... Um... I do remember the rewards turning into better than uncommon at like two and three wins even. Not even, I didn't even get to five. Ooh, we go first again, so I like having things. This is terrific. We will keep her, we will not play a tap land. Oh, I don't like the tap lands now in this hand. So we've got a nice one, two, and a three drop, so this is right on curve. So we'll play a banneret, we'll play a challenger, we'll get either a hunted witness or another banneret, and then we'll do unbreakable formation. And then our creatures, when we do Unbreakable Formation, we will get another two-casting creature, which will either be a Goblin Instigator or a Boros Challenger, and then they will all get plus one, plus one. That is fabulous. And then my opponent will play Ritual of Soot, and they will all die. I'm counting on it. And then after Ritual of Soot, he will get a Spawn of Mayhem off the Cascade. Thank goodness that's not a black card. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got here? That was a hundred witness. I like that. Okay. And then if we do like next turn, for example, if no, maybe not next turn, but like turn four, maybe we draw into a heroic reinforcements, and then off the three. Is that? I take it all back. He's going to play Ritual of Sit soon, isn't he? Yep. It's a motivator who doesn't have haste. And it's one of its controls. Dies, creates two. Okay, I don't care about that too much. 
we will go with a mountain and hope we draw into a land at this point. So now we'll do Unbreakable Formation. And we will get another Banneret, which is fine with me. They all get the business, and I'm going to mentor the Banneret up. And he doesn't get to mentor the Hunted Witness because he wasn't at a higher power before the attack had occurred. And they're all indestructible this turn, which I love, so, so we're in business. And we can keep the pressure on next turn, too, hopefully. Although he took all that damage. That's pretty ballsy. He may have something. This is the Ritual of Sit. Plague Crafter. Okay, that's actually fine with me, because with Plague Crafter, I can sacrifice my Hunted Witness. That's a tricky play. Glowspore Shaman into Plague Crafter into Glowspore Shaman into a land. But I'm going to get a 1-1 one, one with lifelink, so it doesn't bother me all that much. And even if I have to delay this by one turn because of my tap land, I think we might still be doing okay. Maybe. Maybe not. And then he sacrifices him to the Plague Crafter after giving the Plague Crafter haste. Yeah, I'm going to ditch my dude, even though he's got a counter. That doesn't bother me. I've got three mentors on the board. He'll get a counter again. I'm not really worried about it. Do I take seven? Yeah, I think I do. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Oh, I drew a land. So do I just open it up and do heroic reinforcements right away? Yes. Yes, I do. We get a creature. He hits the battlefield. He's going to get plus one, plus one, and haste. And then we attack. We just swim. I'm just going to start picking creatures for all these mentors we got going on. Yeah, they all get pretty scary. That's got to be game. I'm not doing the math, but I'm pretty sure that's more than 11. Is he just frustrated with me right now? Like, I don't want to do this. I get it. I get it. Heroic reinforcements with this cascade nonsense and a bunch of creatures is crazy. I could have got Tajik though with heroic reinforcements, and then Tajik comes down and gets plus one, plus one, and haste, and goes crazy. Or he has haste anyway, but then he goes crazy with another mentor. Yeah, that's way more than. Yeah. Okay. So when this deck works, it's actually pretty fun. <laughs> this event. <laughs> it's just you know keeping a slow hand. I wouldn't even keep a slow hand. I wouldn't even risk it because the odds of you playing mono red are pretty good. Just in general, just assume you're playing mono red. So glad we didn't eat a ritual of soot there, that would have sucked. Or cry of the carnarium, that's It's fine, it's whatever. It is what it is. Alright, we go first, and two Tajiks in hand is kinda nice. I like this. Uh, no turn one play, but that's alright, it'll give us a chance to play this tap land, and then we'll do uh, Goblin Instigator, Tajik, and then into Aurelia, and hopefully by the time we get Aurelia down, the game is over one way or another. And we got our fourth mana, so we can do all the things. And we'll go with the Banneret. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Cool. This would actually work out really well, even if this wasn't a Cascade event. Oh, no, it wouldn't, because the Banneret came from the Cascade. Mm-hmm. So he has to use a Lightning Strike, and that's going to give him a Llanowar Elf, right? Yeah, cool. I don't care if he's got another Llanowar Elf. That doesn't bother me. Okay, that's a little troublesome. Yep. Oh, this is great. Another Instigator. Why don't we just start attacking? I like this idea. He could gang block Tajik, but I have another one. I'm not worried about that. Tajik? Tajik? Whatever. Inescapable Blaze. What's that? Seven damage to me? That's nice. How funny. Yep. Six damage, so I take six. Okay, but I have another Tajik, and I think the right answer is Tajik comes down again. And then we get a creature out of it. Yep, another instigator. Oh, yeah. 
And we go ham. I'll just keep making 2-2s. Two -two. See, I would rather have more 2-2s. Two and although if he does this nonsense again... Well, it's too expensive. It's 6 mana. I mean... Banefire? I don't, doesn't matter. Aurelia comes down, gives somebody... Yeah, Banefire 6. Isn't this a 1? Yeah, Banefire costs 1. So this is a worthless Banefire. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's And that's game. So Aurelia does her thing. We get another creature, yes? Another, okay. That's all we put in the deck was Goblin Instigators, apparently. There's 19 of them, that's it. We'll make a uh, Goblin bigger. Once again, more threats is better than having just loaded up, you know, all of our eggs in one basket. We'll have many baskets with some eggs, and that way we'll do more threats that survive a Chain Whirler in theory, but he does not even, whatever. It's a pretty good idea, though, going Bane. Although, so X is zero in Cascade events like this. Uh, just remember that. Hey, Heroic Reinforce. Okay, so my Vault is going to go up. I think it was at 105%. Still 105%, even though I have, obviously, four Heroic Reinforcements in the deck I'm even playing. What are we, three games in? What are the odds we win five games after losing that first one? That'd be pretty funny. I mean, that was a pretty... I was like thinking this deck wasn't going to work at all in this event, but actually, it does does kind of what I thought it would do. Uh, not the slowest start, even. In fact, a Johnny and Goblin Instigator is a pretty decent combo, because he can bring them back, and then you get two creatures for the for the minus two loyalty. It's kind of nice. But we are on the draw. Sacred Foundry isn't terrible. But it's going to cost me two life, unless I play it on turn three... And then drop instigators back to back. Well, this looks like another mana ramp deck, so wish us luck. All right, so we'll do a tap land. And if he drops a Steel Leaf Champion, this could be bad news. Although Steel Leaf Champion into Growth Chamber Guardian would be pretty sweet. Pelt Collector, of course. So Pelt Collector comes down, and he gets a counter. How terrific for that Pelt Collector. So, yeah, we're in trouble. This is not a great start. Yeah, don't hit Decline by accident. That would be a terrible decision. So I I can't block with Hunted Witness. Steely Champion is, at this point, unblockable. And that's not, I, that's not great at all. But I do want to block with him so I can get him killed. And then maybe... Un oh, goodness. <laughs> So this is where we lose, obviously. This is a total loss, this game. This is unbelievable. <laughs> okay, dude. Alright. Can't block the Steely. What is happening right now? So... Shoot. Blocker, blocker, attacker, doesn't matter. Can't block the Steel Leaf. We'll do Unbreakable Formation for the counter. And to try and get our Banneret. So we've got a Banneret down, so we've got four 2-2s. Two and we can't do nothing. But we could pump a Banneret as a blocker and use him to block a Steel Leaf Champion next turn. If we survive this turn, we're looking at a lot of damage. I mean, I could gang block the Pelt Collector and chump block the Vine Mare and the Brontodon, lose all of my creatures. Bronte's a three drop, so what's he gonna get out of it? A lava coil. <laughs> Perfect. Why not a lava coil? Let's do it. So he lava coils my life gainer, so now, now I'm hosed. <laughs> Alright. Okay. This is, this is stupid. <laughs> well, no, I mean, if we have to lose him, we'll lose him to a 5-3, right? Just whatever. So, we're going to take 8. 
and then we are most assuredly dead next turn. So let's just, just play it out, play it out, whatever. I mean, we're obviously going to die horribly. It's not like we're going to live anyway. I feel like playing a Johnny is the right move because we're going to cascade into something, maybe? Ha! A hunted witness. We win. There's nothing. There's nothing we can do here. This is this is the game. The game is over. All right, carry on, sir. Go for it. You've earned this one. His deck worked perfectly. Although I guess it kind of depends on you know what your deck is trying to do and how consistent it might be able to. Another pelt collector. Why wouldn't it be another pelt collector? <laughs> That's a good idea. That's a good idea. A lot of pelt pelt collectors and even crawl harpooners is also terrific just because it's a two cast, a two drop. So your Steelies and your Bronzodons will trigger it. That's terrific. All right, I'm not going to block. You've earned this one. Just go to town. What are we at? Negative 17? Not bad. All right, let's see what we want out of this one. Um, this is an event I would actually do if I... I'm pretty caught up on my uncommons, but if this event were to come out at the start of a new season, I would do it probably repeatedly. Uh, we're at 105.8%. So, so figure 5.8, right? We'll claim our prize... And, okay, so there is a chance you do get a rare out of the event rewards, okay? So I didn't get enough wins to get to the 4 and 5 to get the rare, but there is a chance, and we got some Fraying Omnipotence, uh, which is an interesting card, but it's still a chance to get a rare, and thereby also we can extrapolate that you could get a Mythic Rare also. And an Invert and Invent. Actually, I don't think I have four of those. So we're still at 5.8. 6.1, so we got 3% three progress. I did have those Invert and Invent, so... 3% progress in the wild card for the uncommon. It's actually kind of a fun event, too. Like, when your deck goes off, it is it is pretty fun and satisfying. So, um, I do like these weekly events that they do. They are pretty cool. So, Guys, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, do remember to subscribe to this channel for a lot more content just like this. I'm all free to play all the time, so the, the maximum value I can get out of my cards is very important to me. If it's important to you, you're going to want to watch how I do this. Thanks so much. Have a good one.